Hi everyone, welcome to this channel. So today I'm going to be talking about whether a one year program is enough to obtain a permanent residency in Canada. So I'm going to be providing you with five tips on how to make it happen if you're doing a one year program. And if you're considering coming to Canada on a study permit and you wish to stay permanently, then this video is definitely for you. So let's dive into the details. Hi everyone, my name is Peter Sisele, and in this channel, we talk about everything that has to do with, you know, admission, visa application, generally life in Canada. So if that's one of the things you're interested in, do it to subscribe and keep watching. So one of the most important things to keep in mind is to first apply to a school that offers postgraduate work permit, you know, eligible program because there are some schools that if you, after going to the school for one or two years, you know, in, especially for colleges, you may not be eligible to apply for a post-graduation work permit. So most of the public universities in Canada, you know, luckily they are all designated learning institutes and they also offer, you know, post-graduation work permit. So before you apply for any school, this is definitely the first thing you should be checking out. Is this school eligible? Especially when you want to stay here permanently, right? If you want, just want to go there, study and go back to your home country, yeah, you may not need to really consider this, okay? One other, one other thing to remember is that if you do a one-year program, like I will always say, you'll be eligible for a one-year post-graduate work permit, right? And if you do a two-year program, you will be eligible for a whopping three years post-graduation work permit. And I think we want to also take notice of that. If you do a one-year program, plus another one-year program, before you apply for your post-graduation work permit, you can get three years of post-graduation work permit, which means the one plus one program will be considered as a three years program. But if you do one year program and then you apply for a post graduation work permit and that expires, you can't and you go to school again, you can't apply for another one because post graduation work permit is only applied, you can only apply for it once. So there is really no that option of extending your post graduation work permit, okay? Except when the government or the Canada immigration decides to bring a policy to extend it okay for example during the COVID-19 most people had because there was really no uh, permanent residency application especially the federal skilled worker and the Canada experience class at that time a lot of people here that finished school actually their work permit expired so you know when they cried out the government actually extended it for about 18 months so but it is not a standard thing okay this is just they create out some of the uh, policies to favor some international students now Let's talk about some of the five things that you can do to make one year program eligible for PRO. Even though you are applying for a two years program, this video is also going to help you. Okay. Number one thing is going to be choose the right program. Okay. Choose the right program. Now, choosing the right program is very important to obtain your permanent residence in Canada. For example, to be eligible for the permanent residency through the express entry, the express entry system is usually the system for the permanent residency application. You need to complete a program that falls under, you know, one of the cat the categories, right? Um, for the, the three different categories are the federal skilled worker program. They have the federal skilled trade, and then the Canadian Experience Class CEC. This is a common one that a lot of people apply for you know uh after you know if you're in canada and you work for one you can apply for this canadian express class so be very strategic you know in choosing your course that will help you to get a skilled job you might get a apply for a course if it's if you're gonna get a skilled job from that it's gonna be a problem so it's essential to choose a program aligned with you know one of these categories so one thing you can always consider when selecting a program, I've done a video on the, the, the jobs in demand. You should always consider the labor market demand for that particular job or, or, or the field that you want to apply for. So you can use some online tools. For example, there is a website called Job Bank. You know, just kind of you know uh, look at what are in, in that particular course that they study. What is the job prospect like? Just you know check online and see what jobs are available. Okay, and then you can also check what is the the Canada national occupation classification which is NOC to see you know if your program is actually eligible to get a skilled job that is very important the number two thing you want to really consider is to study in a province 
that offers pro, uh, pro provincial nomination. Now, almost all of the provinces in Canada offer provincial nomination. So the PNP is uh, another option, alternative to the express entry that allows you to get permanent residency in Canada. So how does this work? Is at, this PNP is a program which you know kind of allows a province to nominate an individual who have the skills and the experience you know that that particular province offers right so they give you that um uh pmp because they see that this particular program or job whatever you know is going to contribute positively to their system so this is really good even though you don't qualify for the federal express entry you can actually get your uh, your your permanent residency through the provincial nomination now the provincial nomination is a very uh, great and excellent way for students who want to settle in in a particular province, right? So if you want to stay in Alberta or some other province, you can also choose that. But the thing is, they, they, it's not all the same. For example, the, the Canadian Experience class is the requirement is the same respect of the province where you are, okay? But for provincial nomination, each province have their own requirements and regulations, right? So if you want to apply for that in Alberta, it's different from Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and the rest, okay? Generally, uh, provincial nomination is, you know, competitive in some provinces, especially like Ontario. It doesn't mean people don't get it. It's just way competitive because, there are, you know, there's a lot of people over there. So I've seen a lot of cases where people, after graduating from, you know, a university in Ontario, they will move to either Alberta, Manitoba, Saskatchewan because they have a more flexible provincial nomination. Okay, it doesn't mean if, it, but for the Canadian experience class, it have no respect out of the province. Okay, so just go through the process and kind of, you know, it depends on the province you are, you know, definitely check out and see if you like any of the province. So if you've been enjoying this video so far, why don't you hit that like button and also subscribe. It's going to help this channel grow. Okay, let's go back, talk about the third tip, improving your language skills. Now, language proficiency is a very crucial part in this whole express entry application process. So you really need to demonstrate to the Canadian immigration that you are proficient in either English. You can't just say, I know how to speak English. You have to do an English proficiency test for that. So it's important for you to, I mean, another thing with this English test is that you can get higher score in this English test and it also helps to increase your point in the express entry okay? because this express, express entry is a point system the fact that you've studied in canada you've lived in canada for two years and work doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to qualify that automatically it's going to you're going to get the pr you need to have a certain minimum number of points called the, comp the comprehensive ranking score in every draw there is a minimum score that it requires so if your score meets that you can definitely apply now it's essential for you to you know um if you want to show your english proficiency you can do the iel tls or the cell pip they are both great english tests for those in canada and this usually help to evaluate your skills in reading writing speaking and listening okay so I, if you're doing a one-year program i would suggest you start practicing for your english test and if possible to write it close to the time you're graduating or you know when you that one year you're going to be working you can also do your um english test that period the english test is valid for two years so you don't want to do it too early because you don't want it to expire let's talk about the fourth tip gaining relevant canadian work experience now gaining canadian work experience is highly valued by a lot of employers and also the immigration authorities so while you're in school one of the things you can do is to start working some part-time job you can do internship or some co-op this really helps to get some canadian work experience right um although this particular experience doesn't count at in terms of work uh, requirement for the permanent residency okay you will need to work one year post graduation on a skilled job to be eligible for the canadian experience class okay so according to the canada national occupation classification noc uh, skilled job experience means work experience that are gained in tier zero tier one tier two tier three it basically means most of these jobs require a minimum of like a bachelor's degree or like a college education okay i mean there are some other uh positions you can also maybe even with high school you know you can grow into 
also getting a skill job as well so very important to network with professionals in your field also attend a lot of job fairs to increase the chance of finding employment do your, your linkedin is a very you know fantastic way of getting employment right um so make sure you 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 know beef up your um your LinkedIn profile just check some re uh, good examples over there and then um you should be able to do very great on your linkedin okay now the last tip i'm going to talk about today is seeking a professional advice and doing a lot of research well seeking professional advice is optional but i would say it is very important okay um if you know you are you not you don't think you can do it i think i mean if you do if you school here you should be able to but there might be some certain cases or scenario that applies to you that you may need to seek an immigration consultant or do a lot of research everything is really clearly stated in the canada immigration website as much as possible i think if you read it it's going to be clear if you are now in a situation that doesn't apply to what has been stated that you can seek a professional advice okay from a licensed consultant you can you know if you want to watch some videos online just to have an idea so you can start putting things together you know your, your 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 language proficiency your educational credentials your work experience and everything okay have you know um a professional also assess it but if you can do it yourself you don't really need a professional so let's conclude here i think we've been i've mentioned a lot of points in conclusion uh, is one year program enough to obtain permanent residency absolutely but you have to play your cards well you have to be really smart and you have to plan effectively okay and whether you're doing a two years program all of these things that i mentioned here is also going to apply to you so definitely start making plans and preparation and do a lot of research there's a wealth of information online so you can also check those ones out and then spend a lot of time and ask questions right if something you're not clear of you can ask maybe if you have anybody in your in your surrounding in anywhere that they you know, probably they've done that before you can actually ask them to see if there are some tips that they can share with you it's very important talk to people that have already applied for permanent residency they should be able to give you one or more insights so that's going to be it for this video if you enjoyed this video why don't because that you know smashing that like button and also subscribe and if you want to reach out to me my contact details are going to be in the pinned comment and also in the video uh, description if you have any question and you, and you can also ask a question in the comment section um and if you are doing a one-year program a two-year program you know you can also put it in the, in the comment section and any other specific question that you have and i'll try to address the question as soon as possible thank you so much for watching this video i'll see you in the next video